All right, welcome to our channel, Amish Meadows. And today, I'd like to tell you a little bit what we're doing on this particular project. I'm Joe S. Miller. I'm one of the owners of Metal Arc Log Homes. And today, we're here in beautiful Trout Creek, Montana. You can see the beautiful green fields. There's still snow on the mountains. We've had a lot of spring rain, so it's just a perfect place. There's aspens growing here and cows grazing. So it's a beautiful place to be working with the mountains in the background snow. But today we've got a client, his name is Steven Sears. And uh, we started his subfloor. We came here, the concrete was complete. We're taking this project all the way from framing the basement uh, walls downstairs. Actually, it's a four foot crawl space, a big crawl space. We're putting all our floor joists in, our BCIs, TJIs. And then we're going to put three quarter inch tongue and groove plywood on top of here, cedar fascia around the outside. And then we're going to come in with our crew and set the logs as well. When we're done setting the logs, we're going to put the roof on and we're going to take it all the way through the finished roof. So we're going to put composite shingles on uh, as the end product. So that's what we're working on. This is day two. And the first day we basically got all our, ri our uh, sill on. T today we're getting our rim on and our floor joists on. And tomorrow we'll work on getting the plywood on. And then probably Monday morning, this is uh, midweek. And then we got about one more day left. And then next week, our other crew is going to come in and set the logs. We'll come back and do the roof. So that's what we're doing, and that's uh, where we're at with uh, here at Metal Arc Log Homes. Let me show you down here. We've got uh, when we got here, we had just the concrete and these bolts sticking out of the concrete. So what we did is we put our pressure treated uh, sill plate on here with a sill seal in between the plate and the concrete to seal that off. And then we put our washers and our nuts down here and cinched that down. Then what we did is we have these uh, tie downs and these hold our sill, our rim, sorry, our rim to the sill. So that's what that, that's what those uh, tie downs are for, A35 clips. And then we've got a double uh, rim board on here to create more of a, uh, a greater surface on the outside. And now let's come over here and I'll show you how we fasten the rafters, the floor joists, onto the sill plate. Today I got my two important helpers along. This is my daughter Avalon and my son Wyatt, and they came with Dad to uh, make sure I do the project correctly. So what we do here is we put two by six blocking on here, upright, and what that does when we set our, uh, there'll be three quarter inch plywood on top of here, and then we'll set our log right on top of here. That way this is the load bearing and it's not trying to squash down on these blocks right here. So not only do we have this holding up the log, this holding up the log, our three quarter plywood, we also have this uh, upright, which is tremendous. There's no way to crush that. So that's what those are for. And then on the center, we're going to do the same thing. We put blocking in as well as uh, vertical rafter blocking. As you can see in a few minutes here, we'll put that in as well for any sideways uh, back and forth movement so that they'll be completely locked in place and this floor is going to be built to withstand a tornado or anything else. What we'll be doing is after our three quarter inch subfloor will be put on here, we're going to put um, ice and water shield going down the face of this all the way down to here to make sure this is completely waterproof. Then next we'll ha we have metal, custom metal, that's about two and a half inches by 15 inches that goes all the way down here to make sure that's completely covered with metal. Then on top of that, we put a cedar fascia on the outside, one by 12 cedar, which comes down about here to dress it up. So you have three la layers of protection on the outside here. You have the ice and water shield, you have the metal going down the outside to protect it, and then you have the uh, tongue, and, um, sorry, you, then you have the cedar going across the face of that. So it's gonna be very well protected, and then they just bring their dirt up to here, or perhaps uh, they wanna put rocks on the bottom here. That's also not another option. One thing that's unique about this particular home is it's taken a, a lot longer to do it because in this particular small, I think, I believe it's 1,400 some square feet, there's over, there's actually 20 corners on this entire uh, project. So, I mean, we get going and then we get to corner and then there's another corner. So it's gonna take a, long, a lot longer. If it's just a rectangle box, it goes so fast, but it, when you get all these corners, it just takes a lot more time. But the end product's going to look absolutely amazing when it's all done and completed, just because it's gonna have so much character, architecture, and just the different angles and corners and roof. 
roofs and everything. So that's going to be really cool. Over here they, they'll have a porch. You'll see the sauna tubes coming up. There's a deck on this side and on the far side there's also another deck. So they're going to be able to get out on their deck, look at the mountains and it's just going to be absolutely spectacular. It's a great place. They're kind of up on a little knoll. They look down. There's an old homestead as you can see over here, an old barn with the mountains in the background, some aspen up there on top and it's absolutely spectacular. If they clear a few of these trees away, they'll be able to look right into the Cabin of Mountain Wilderness uh, with there's a big mountain back there with snow on it. So I'm sitting here in the crawl space and as you can see there's quite a bit of headroom which makes it really nice to run your plumbing, your electrical and, and uh, there'll be, we're going to do two inches of spray foam underneath the subfloor to keep this really warm, the subfloor. And so we basically just come in and we put a pressure treated plate all along the bottom here and then we put our studs on here every 16 inches and that creates a really solid um, wall for our floor joists to sit on. Okay, so when we got here, the concrete was already uh, in the ground and all the gravel, they did a great job with graveling it. Um, the concrete did have a little, a few issues unfortunately, uh, but we got them squared away. It wasn't totally level, so we had to cut our studs all different lengths, which was, is never fun. But we got that done. Uh, we have a big footer here and then we come in with a pressure treated plate, put that down, put our two by six studs 60 inches on center. Now this is not, there's no log wall that goes on here. All this wall is doing is holding the, helping to support the floor joists, which is helping to hold the floor up in place, which technically you probably wouldn't need it because these are so strong, but overkill is always better. So that's why we put this in here. Uh, and then on the, there's two more walls on each side here and those we put two by eight uh, boards on there because there's actually those are log, load bearing uh, walls so there'll be a, lo a log wall coming on top of those so that's why we, we beefed those up and made those heavier. Uh, one thing that our, the client did here in the center he's got a little bit of a basement area he can actually stand up inside here and uh, that's kind of a cool place for storage and that type of thing. So we're almost done putting all our uh, BCI joists up and this is the last of the, of the joists, so they're just cutting them to length. They come in two foot increments, so we always have to order extra long, and then we cut them back to make the right length. Here's our pile of three quarter inch tongue and groove uh, plywood that's going to go on the floor. And we're going to go take a look at this cedar right here. Now this is the cedar that will go on the outside of the uh, porch and all around the subfloor. Now there's a rough saw on side on here and a smooth side. You're, what you're looking at the smooth side, we actually turn the rough saw on side out, which is the the nice nicer side. So this is this goes in towards the house. You don't see that side, but that's real real nice western cedar. It's expensive material because cedar logs are very prized out in this area. So, it, but it's it makes a really nice finishing touch to the outside of the home. Now this is our subfloor metal right here and this is what I was explaining that will go over the outside of the uh, rim and the logs will actually sit on top of here. Here's the floor going across. This goes down over the outside of the, uh, the rim down toward the concrete and overhangs that and then we're going to put cedar on here. So that'll be, you'll see a little bit of uh, this exposed metal on the bottom and then you'll see a cedar from here on up. Now when we came down this morning, we're about an hour and a half from home, from the Metal Arc Log Homes. And when we came down, every, every time we come down, we're bringing a load of logs. So this is, uh, there's four bundles on here, and we, we package these up, as you may have seen from our other videos. And each bundle has got the client's initials on it, SS, as in Steven Sears. And this number one tells me that the lowest log, the lowest row in this bundle is going to be a row one. If you look at that, that's got a 13, so I know that's going to be higher up. And each log has a number and a letter on it. This one's upside down. No, it's, it's not. One T. So this is row one, and that's the number T. So like the first log in the row would be A, B, C. That goes all the way to T. So you can tell there's a lot of logs in each row. Now this one says 2D, so that's A, B, C, D. That's the fourth log in row two. And that's how that goes around, uh, all the way around the house. Now you can also see this angle cut right here. By looking at that, I know that's up on the gable uh, because the roof will be uh, going this direction right here and the tongue and groove will be nailed right to that. 
If you look underneath here, you'll see this hole right here, and that's an, ele that's an electrical hole that's pre-drilled, and our wiring is going to run through those holes right there. There's also this smaller hole here, that's a 5 8 inch hole, a 3 quarter hole for 5 8 inch, it's pins, steel pins that we put in here for earthquake and shear, and each log gets several of those, so you, there's never a problem with them coming apart as well as we screw them, we glue them, we put foam gasket on the top. Uh, these are upside, I can't see it here. Um, here's, a good, here's a good spot right here, there's a groove right here, and in this groove we put a foam gasket. Should the logs ever tend to gap or anything, this foam gasket expands up to one half of an inch and it will completely block this, it should block it so there's no air movement coming in through. But remember they're also pinned, they have, there's glue on this whole entire area, there's glue here, and they have screws going down. So they're very tight, very stable. Not to say that you don't get a rebellious log occasionally and it wants to twist or do something crazy, but we try to eliminate as much as we possibly can. It seems every house has got a log or two that just has got a you know, rebellious streak in it in mind of its own and it wants to twist or do something, but there's always a remedy. And we try to use the driest logs we possibly can to eliminate all that. But that's just the nature of using, you know, an actual physical uh, tree. Now you'll see if you look at the end of these logs, you'll see a black crayon, you're going to see a red crayon, you're going to see a green crayon. And all these tell us what part of the house this uh, log belongs to. When you see red, that belongs, or green, sorry, when you see black, that goes on the exterior of the home. When you see red, that tells me that's an interior log that goes inside the home. When you see the green, that's going to tell me that there's a particular, because this home has so many colors to it, uh, up on the very top there's going to be one particular portion of the house that is going to be marked green so we can tell that all that little area, perhaps it's a shed dormer or a gable dormer, and all that little area is going to have its own color so that it's not being mixed up with anywhere else. So we color code everything, mark every log, and if you can read the alphabet you can usually put these things together. When we got here this morning um, there was no rim in place and just one little short wall was up. So today, so far, we've gotten all the rest of the walls downstairs done. We've got all the rim on the exterior, and before we leave today, we hope to have all our uh, floor joists in place and all our blocking done, and tomorrow we show up, we can start with the plywood. So thanks so much for watching us here at Amish Meadows, Metal Arc Log Homes, and well, I better get to work so we can get this done today. This way a little bit of hope.